welcome back to the channel my name is kate if you're new here i like to make clothes here on youtube i have a market this upcoming weekend so i wanted to make a few pieces because i have like enough stuff probably to take now but i just want like a few extra things i have no plan right now on what i want to make i'm just gonna let it flow and see what i want to make this week but subscribe if you want to hang out and make clothes together i think it'd be fun i'm out of bobbins Clearly I haven't sewed in a long time because why did I just sew the wrong side together? I literally sewed the panel to itself. I was supposed to just sew this part and then attach the other panel on the side, so. Gonna have to seam rip this. Okay, that's better. I just did a zigzag stitch as well. I'm gonna get a serger, I promise. I just can't afford it right now, so soon. I have so many things that I need to invest in. Okay, time for the next panel. Starting to look a bit more like shorts. Okay, I'm almost done. I just need to do this part and then the waistband and then we'll try them on. Okay, I'm doing the waistband right now and normally what I would do is I would make a casing and then feed the elastic through the entire casings. I've made these shorts before with the same fabric and that's what I did last time. But this time what I wanna do, I'm gonna leave the front part without the elastic and then have this back part be elastic. I think it looks a little bit more put together than if I did elastic all the way around. It would look a little bit too casual so i'm gonna sew this elastic down and i might do some basting stitches first i really like how they're turning out and it's almost been like two hours but i'm taking my time i'm not like rushing through these this is how the shorts turned out and i have enough fabric to possibly make a top i kind of want to mimic this shape very high neck very square but i don't really know what to do with the back i don't have like a zipper or anything so Figuring out closures are such a hard part of sewing. As far as the front goes, I really like this shape. I think it would look nice as a set with these shorts. I'm gonna just trace this top. That's how I make most of my clothes. I'll trace it on paper or I'll just trace it straight from the garment. But I kind of want to sew like a dart. Okay, we're gonna figure it out. lunch break I haven't checked it in a while so let's chat I ran into a ton of issues with this top my original plan flopped so I just kind of was altering it and stuff as you can see I had like sideways darts that I thought would look nice but they just weren't hitting the right spot it looked kind of awkward so I added them vertical instead and I think I like this better and the back did not turn out at all how I wanted it to but I kind of like it it's like grown on me Originally, I wanted it to be like a keyhole, but then I didn't have like a button or anything so you could button it up. So I just left it open, but that's what it's looking like. I kind of really like it. Do you guys like it? We finished. It turned out a lot better than I expected, honestly, because I haven't sewed in a while. The bias tape worked out very well. I honestly really love it and I don't want to get rid of it because I'm now out of that fabric. Every time I do something like sell in person or do a drop on my website, I usually let myself keep one thing that didn't sell. And I'm thinking this set will be mine if no one else buys it, but it's so cute. I kind of do want someone to buy it because I want someone to wear it and I want to see someone else wear it. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. I didn't even really explain what I did to make these, so I'll go through it really quick. Obviously, this isn't a tutorial, but it'll give you like a little bit of an idea of what I did. So I have this shorts pattern that I trace off of a pair of shorts that I already have. So basically, you cut out like two of these, sew them on this line, and then cut out another two, sew them on that line. And then you'll have like a front and back, and then you'll sew the sides together. 
and then you can do the waistband. And then for the top, I showed you guys this earlier, but I traced this top. I ended up tracing that and then putting this bodice block on top of it and tracing where the darts were, but the side darts didn't end up working out very well, so I ended up adding the vertical darts. And then I made like bias tape from the rest of the fabric and then just did that for around the armholes and then the neckline. Probably gonna try to make another one of these tomorrow. I'm gonna try to like adjust the pattern a little bit and then maybe trace this specific shirt. And then I think I need to add like something in the front because it looks a little plain to me personally, but I probably won't sell it like that. But I wanna show you guys like what I would put on. Something like this. I think I'm gonna go thrift and then try to source a few things. I also have been selling like vintage stuff, so. Let me quickly show you what I got. I only spent like $20, I think. Just a disclaimer, I guess. When I source things for the vintage market that I do, I don't primarily sell vintage clothing. I mostly sell my handmade pieces, but the vintage stuff is kind of just to supplement like that, if that makes sense. So I never really buy that much stuff. And I strictly only buy things that I would one, wear myself, just in case it doesn't sell. I don't wanna just take a bunch of stuff from the thrift store and then have it for no reason. And then also things that I can alter or use like the fabric from. This is the first thing I bought. It's just this denim skirt, but it has all these pleats and I really like this. I kind of want to keep everything that I bought today, but we'll see if anyone else wants it. And then I found these Victoria's Secret pajama bottoms, but the pattern and the colors together, I feel like you could definitely wear these out and dress them up a little bit. It looks green on camera, but it's like a blue and yellow with the little yellow tie in the front. And then this really simple, kind of like a slip skirt, but it has this floral design on the bottom. I think this would be cool to layer with like a longer shirt on top. And then these, I think I'm officially keeping for myself. I don't think I can sell them because they were just a really good find. It's these like lime green, yellow Columbia shorts. I just really like them. And they were only $5 for like a really high quality pair of shorts. And I feel like athletic shorts and stuff are super in right now. So I guess I really only bought three things, which is fine. I have other stuff from last market. I don't want to collect like too much stuff. I just want to share things that I found and thought were cool with other people. So yeah, that's all I bought. Hi, it's Wednesday. I'm working on this skirt. It's the same skirt I made in my last tutorial. So check that out if you haven't already. I actually got my IUD replaced today. So I'm kind of just sitting on the couch and crocheting. And then you can probably hear it, but I'm also laundering those items that I bought yesterday at the thrift. I'm just gonna sit here with my heating pad and crochet and watch something on netflix i like made myself lunch and i made myself a matcha before i went so i could come back and just like hang out hello finished the skirt yeah it only took me like half a day i think i just sat on the couch for a while and then i finished up this morning that's what it looks like i'll try it on i think i did say that it was thursday which means that the market is in two days it's on saturday i think i'm gonna make another matching set and I want to make it in this pink gingham. I think it's going to be so cute. I might make the shorts like a little bit shorter. So it's more of like a lounge set, if that makes sense. So this is from the Scrap Exchange. I only paid $4.50 for one and a half yards. So I think that'll be enough. Let's hope it's enough for um, the shorts and the top. But I'm gonna start off with doing the shorts first. If you're new to the channel, you might not know that I try to use all recycled fabrics and I am very very fortunate to live by a creative reuse center. The one in my area is called the Scrap Exchange. So if you're in North Carolina, the Triangle area, the Scrap Exchange is in Durham. You could definitely try to find a creative reuse center near you. They're not super super popular but they definitely have them. So all the fabric that I get is scraps. Um, sometimes they have bigger pieces of fabric like this one or you can even cut it from the bolts or the rolls. So I highly recommend trying to find a creative reuse center near you. Also, it's so much cheaper than going to the fabric store. The only downfall is if you find it, you probably won't be able to find it again, which is a little bit scary when you're a beginner because you can't just buy more fabric. Once it's cut, it's done. And another thing you can do is just go to the normal thrift store. They have like tons of sheets and linens 
I go straight to the linen section every time. Definitely look into the thrift store for fabric because that's my favorite way to find fabric. It also makes it a little bit more special. Those are just a few tips for me so far. I think I've been sewing for like almost six months now. They also will sell sewing patterns and yarn if you're into that too. But yeah, that's my spiel. I'm gonna iron this and then we'll get back into making the set. look almost like a boxer short especially because they're pretty thin you probably need to wear like nude underwear or maybe like just wear it over a swimsuit and i was thinking you know how uniqlo sells boxer shorts um i feel like this is kind of a spin on that except it doesn't have like the front fly area i guess i really like them and i thought i had enough fabric to make a top too but i think i'm not gonna be able to do that so it's just gonna be the shorts for now here's a try on I actually found a way to get this elastic on pretty cleanly. It doesn't look amazing on the inside, but as far as like the outside, it looks pretty good. Good morning. I'm drinking a matcha. I've been obsessed with coconut milk recently and just coconut in general. I made like a coconut chickpea curry. I made like the chocolate coconut mousse. And now I've been putting it in my matcha. My mom has always done that, so it's reminding me of her. It's Friday, which means the market is tomorrow. I have everything kind of set up. This looks like a mess, but I'm starting to set everything up. I wanted to make a matching top for this. I don't have that much fabric, but I do have enough to make like a shirt top. So I think I'm gonna do that and then have that be like the set. I guess I'll show you how I make those tops. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just hem the top and bottom, do like a double fold hem or whatever. And you wanna make sure that you hem before you do the shearing or else it's gonna be like really hard. So that's what I'm gonna do first. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw straight lines that we are gonna stitch over. This is all marked now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our elastic sharing thread. This you can buy on Amazon, a two pack for like 10 bucks and it has like a ton in it. So I recommend that. You can also buy it at like any craft store, but I'm gonna hand wind a couple bobbins. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want it to be too tight or too loose with a very neutral tension, just wind it. If you don't want to do this in the middle of your project, I would do a few bobbins ahead of time because you go through this elastic very, very fast when you're sharing. So this is what's going to be going in our bobbin and then we just have normal thread on the top. Another thing I should say is make your markings on the right side of the fabric because you're going to be sewing those lines on top of um, the right side. I'm setting my tension as high as it will go and then also my stitch length pretty long. Um, again, we just have normal thread up top. And we're just going to be sewing a straight stitch over and over and over again. I'm now at a point where I want to spin around and then stitch back down the other way. I don't like cut the thread or anything. What I do is I make sure my needle is in. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. I'm going to spin my piece of fabric. And then I'm gonna lift it back up and then carefully just slide this over. And we're gonna cover this up when we stitch it later on anyways. And then you're just gonna put your presser foot back down and do your first stitch. And then you're just gonna stitch like normal and you don't have to back stitch or anything. You're just gonna stitch all the way down and then just repeat that. And that's just makes it a little bit easier and this might be confusing why I have like this extra space here. It's just cause I don't know how much room I'll need to do like French seams or something. Yeah. And then as far as the amount of fabric, I don't know how to really describe it. Maybe there's a number that's kind of like a guideline, but I don't know that number. I kind of just wing it. I gave it a good iron and now I'm going to stitch up the sides. I kind of changed my plan a little bit here. So I'll show you what I was originally going for with this top. All the marks are on it still, I need to wash those off. So 
ignore that. I wanted this like full length little set. Since these are more like boxer shorts, like, like definitely more lounge shorts, I don't know if they'd really be worn in public that often. I was thinking of making this into more of a lounge set, so instead of having this so long, I want to fold it in half and then make it like a bralette and boxer shorts. So let me show you that. So it would kind of look like this instead, and I think this is also a better option because then it's double lined on top. I feel like it was a little bit too thin, so now this is extra padding up top. I kind of feel like I like that better. I also added this little flower here. I kind of really like it. I really am liking making these sets. I think I'm gonna make like a little bolero situation. My idea for this, which I don't even know if this is gonna work, but I know people do this with crocheting, is where they just do a flat panel and then sew like just the sleeves and then leave like the top open, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I have this rectangle of this fabric, which I'm terrified to sew, honestly, but hopefully it goes okay. So I'm gonna sew up the sleeves and then cut maybe like a little bit of a neckline, and then it'll just be like really boxy. You'll see what I mean. Like this. Very simple, it's like barely a shirt. It's almost like a scarf. See how it's a rectangle? All I did was stitch the armholes and then I hemmed the top and I'm thinking this is the last thing that I'm gonna make, but I'm making these like shorts that look like watermelon. Pink and then green, both checker, kind of like mismatch. Same exact process as before. I finished. I feel like they're really cute and it's a good way to start using up more scraps. Cause I have a lot of little scraps. These are just like less than a yard. I really need a break from sewing cause I did a lot of sewing this week, but I'll take you to the market with me tomorrow. Gonna finish prepping and then I'll see you tomorrow. few days after the market, I always try to be very transparent with you guys, but this month's market was pretty slow. It was a very hot day, holiday weekend, and it was Father's Day, so it's understandable. I didn't sell as much as I was expecting. The reality of it is that it can be very inconsistent sometimes, so keep that in mind if you're trying to do um, a similar thing. The last two markets were really good. This one it's very slow, but with that being said, the markets are always worth it for me because it's very like social and I love meeting people, talking to people and meeting new vendors and kind of picking their brain about what they do. I had such a great time despite maybe not selling that much, but um, that's how the market went. I don't think I'll be doing a market next month in July, so I'm trying to kind of get rid of all of my stock right now. So I've been posting a lot of my vintage stock and then also um, just personal clothes. They're not vintage, but stuff that I've been trying to get rid of um, on my Depop. So I'll link that down below if you wanna check it out. I do wanna include some of the stuff in my next collection or also maybe do like a story sale. So those are just some updates there, but I am gonna keep the checkered set. I think I told you guys before, I try to let myself keep one thing that I make if something doesn't sell. So I think I'm gonna keep the set this one i hope you guys enjoyed these everything i made videos if you do give it a like and let me know in the comments make sure you subscribe because we're almost to 10k and i really really am excited i'm thinking of something to do to celebrate um let me know if you guys have any ideas for like a 10k video i love seeing everything you guys make as well my last tutorial was that skirt video and so many of you guys have already been tagging me on instagram and you guys are getting that done so fast so i really love that and i just love sharing what we make together so i guess that's it and i'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.